come back at the police station that my dad found. And anyways, they were going to throw it out. But I found some cool pictures in here. And there's one in particular, anyways, I thought it was really cool. Uh, there it is, there. Who's that? You don't know who that is? No. It's Alan Legere. He, well, I guess you wouldn't have heard no. of him before. Anyway, well, how do I even begin to explain Alan Legere? Well, uh, I guess it started off when he murdered John Glendenny in Black River. Him and two other guys. They were only young. Anyways, they broke into his house, stole about $45,000, and then um, they sexually assaulted his wife and everything, too. But she survived, luckily, but John didn't. So they were all sentenced to life in prison, but that was only the beginning, really. There's so much more to Alan Legere. Okay. Alan Legere was sentenced to life in prison along with his two accomplices. However, on May 3rd, 1989, Alan Legere was escorted from the Atlantic Institution, a maximum security facility in Renew, to a modern hospital to treat self-inflicted injuries. Although handcuffed and chained, Legia managed to break out of his restraints while in the bathroom, dash out past his guards and distant. I want to break free! So why did you guys trust Alan Legere to go to the bathroom by himself? Oh, no comment. No. That's it. I didn't put comment on the table. I thought so. Yeah, so who are we taking care of today? Uh, Alan Legere? Oh, yeah, that's right. Double double, right? Oh, yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Let's go! On the night of May 28th, was raped and beaten to death by Legere. Nina, her sister-in-law, was likewise sexually assaulted and beaten. She survived the attack. The old clan residence was then set on fire. Nina, badly burned, managed to crawl downstairs where she was rescued by a passerby. On October 13, 1989, Alan Legere struck again, this time in Newcastle at the home of Linda and Donna Downey. Linda, 41, and Donna, 45, had been sexually assaulted and brutally beaten to death. Their home was then set on fire, but it was put out before their bodies could be turned to ashes. Father Smith was a punctual man, always on time for his daily mass. After 15 minutes of waiting for his arrival, members of the congregation went to the rectory to find their 69-year-old priest. had been tortured. His face had been carved with a knife that hadn't penetrated more than a quarter of an inch. He had been repeatedly kicked so vigorously that his entire ribcage had caved in. It appeared that no one was safe from the madman who seemed fully capable of outwitting more than a hundred police officers. Jeeps sped up and down the Miramichi. Helicopters flew overhead, scanning the woods. Dogs led search parties through heavily wooded areas. Many citizens installed floodlights in their backyards. Alan Legere was many miles away, though, in Montreal. After some time, he felt the urge to return to his home on the Miramichi. Once he reached Moncton, he unsuccessfully attempted to hijack a car. The driver managed to speed away while filling up at a gas station. Legere then jumped onto a nearby flatbed truck, but didn't make it much further before he was stopped by the police. What you gonna do? The hunt was over. 
Legere was found guilty of all four murders and sentenced to life imprisonment with no possibility of parole for 25 years. Guilty. The case of Alan Legere was the first in Canada to use DNA testing. He is now in the super maximum security wing of the St. Anne de Plaine prison outside of Montreal. Alan Legere will long be remembered as the man who gave reason for everyone to lock their doors before they went to bed at night, who brought terror to a small community, who shattered perception of a small safe town. Yes, Alan Legere will forever be known as the monster of the Miramichi. And that's Alan Legere. Oops. Chance.